All right, guys, today I'm gonna do another setup video, I guess. And this is gonna be about my eBay setup that used to run my business. Um, it's gonna be kind of confusing, and yes, I know, I need to clean and organize, blah, blah, blah. It's very hard to be organized as a reseller, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, there's a lot that goes into this and it's evolved a lot over time, but I just kinda wanna show you guys where I'm at right now and what all we have set up here to run an eBay business. So if you haven't seen my last video, I primarily sell like video games and computers and just, you know, Walkmans, any electronics really. But um, I just wanna show you guys how I have it all set up and how I'm able to do that. So the first step of having a business is being able to actually list things. So here I have my photo booth. This was, I bought this on Amazon like a couple years ago. I think it was around like $100 or so. Um, so they're not too expensive. Um, they're a great, really great investment. Um, just It just makes it so much easier to have good lighting. Um, I actually ended up putting like a little piece of carpet down here just because the white got really dirty and beat up over the years. So it just keeps it looking a lot cleaner and it actually kind of looks better in terms of reducing shadows as well when you're taking pictures of stuff. So yeah, and then I got my chair here, obviously that um, moves around so I can reach any of this stuff. So um, as I'm listing, this is kind of some of the things I may be using. So like rubber bands, like wrap up cables and stuff. Um, Q-tips for cleaning cartridges or really anything and batteries for testing and right to the right of the listing area is where i test things so as you can see we have three tvs here um, the two crts is mainly just because um a lot of times i'll try to do two things at once like i'll try to be cleaning up and listing a nintendo and like a sega genesis at the same time so it just helps me multitask a little more and then the center flat screen is for like the newer consoles um, so as you can see here, I do all my own repairs. So I have some like tools and stuff like that. I'm not going to go everything in extreme detail. Um, I have a soldered iron as well as a fume extractor. Um, <laughs> and the games that you see on the top of this TV, this TV, and, um, these ones down here are literally just for testing consoles. And I know they work. So like if I get a Sega Genesis, um, you guys don't mind the condition of this game. That's why it's a tester. If it works good, you put it in. You know, I'm very familiar with Sonic 2. It's a good one to test all the buttons on the controllers. Uh, why I have this pulled up here is I actually have some, like, this is a test cart for Atari 2600, so you can test all the features of the console. So you can try, like, the different switches and, um, like, the, all the test controllers on there. So stuff like that's really helpful as well. Um, I have an iFixit toolkit here, which is my main toolkit that I use. Um, this is the ProTech toolkit, it's called. Um, it's really, really been a great tool toolkit, really. I mean, I haven't really had any issues. Some of the flathead bits have kind of worn out over time, but it is what it is. Um, I have a desoldering gun. And then this power strip here is just so I can easily plug things in and test them on these TVs. And these TVs are particular. Um, why I chose them. Well, for one, they have composite video right in the front, so I don't have to reach around back. And then the RF, I plugged into the back of the TV and ran it out to the front with a little coupler here. So then if I get a system, I can easily just plug it in right here. I don't have to like be reaching around back and trying to struggle to plug it in. So yeah, I really like this area. Um, it could be a little bigger for sure. Um, a lot of work gets done here. And <laughs> this was after a lot of cleaning. It normally looks a lot worse than this. So um, yeah. So that's basically my repair station, and um, as well as I do have a, a disc resurfacer. This is a VMI 2500. Um, it's a pretty good machine. It's definitely not the best out there, but it does the job for what I need. Um, I just have some like cleaning things for when the discs come out. You gotta wipe them down a bit. And then below that, there's some more tools, like replacement parts, like Game Boy speakers, um, Xbox battery covers, just a bunch of things that I use to um, fix things. Um, yeah, basically, that's basically all there is to this fixing station. Um, I have some, I do a lot of Atari, so I have like a lot of spare parts there that I use for 2600s. But yeah, anyway, that's kind of the repair and listing area. So let's move on to the next section. 
Okay, now once something gets listed, um, it could go various spaces. So here's my listing area. This is the most convenient right here. We have these two big shelves. These are all listed items. Right now, my store, I have, um, I'm literally right at a thousand listings right now. I had more, but um, Christmas kind of <laughs> lowered that number a bit. But yeah, this is kind of more like the bigger kind of miscellaneous stuff. Um, and then we have a ping pong table here, which we'll get to later. But underneath of the tables, all things that are for sale. So you can see the entire underneath has a bunch of stuff. Um, these shelves are also listed. This is all like console bundles. I used to put them in bins, but it just ended up being a lot nicer just to literally put them on shelves. Um, right to the left of that. Um, this is all listed games. So up here we kind of have like some of the jewel case games. Uh, box stuff. I mean, obviously there's some overflow too. Um, and just a bunch of other games that I have listed um, individually. It slides over. There's more down there. Um, and then these four, well, I guess only three of them, are all listed items as well. Um, so this one's kind of like camera stuff and computer stuff so basically <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain the way that i organize these things a lot of people will do like the number system and as you can see when i first set these up i made these i labeled all these bins and like oh video game consoles we're gonna go here um, controllers and whatever but it just ended up they were being too small and it just was kind of annoying so i ended up kind of just categorizing things like a lot of these labels aren't even True. Well, actually, some of them are, but um, like this accessories, this is video game accessories. There's some on the top as well. But like a little flat bin like this, this is all like small consumer electronics. It's like CD players, uh, radios, you know, whatever. Uh, little micro cassettes, uh, Alexas, really anything. So I kind of organize like that. And there's another kind of like this is all camera stuff. Um, I kind of just put alike things together, or at least I try to if I have the, the room for it. I don't know. I basically kind of just remember where everything is. It's very rare that I lose something, so that says something about it. Um, up here is mainly, like, sealed stuff. I kind of have a section for that. More um, console bundles. This shelf is all, like, cartridge games that I have for sale. So that's, like, a lot of them. Uh, there's some more cartridge games, more systems more cartridge games more systems uh, this bottom shelf is um down there's a bunch of like cases for systems and just other things and as you can see the ping pong table is still full on this side as well um yeah it's kind of my organization system seems like it would be really bad but honestly i haven't had much issue with it or reason to change it um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm at maybe once I get to 2000 listings down the road, maybe I'll be like, oh my God, this is way too much stuff. But I don't know, as long as you keep it kind of clean and, um, you know where you're putting things, um, you know, I think you can make a system like this work where you put a like things together. Um, I was kind of thought about labeling each shelf, like what should be on there, but it's always hard because you run out of room in some sections and some sections, don't didn't need a whole shelf so i just decided i'm just gonna do what i want and over time it will just become natural and it has so that's really good so yeah let's get to the shipping process what i would do for that so as you saw a minute ago i ship on a ping pong table <laughs> which is kind of interesting i don't know if anyone else who does this but i've done this for years and it's worked really great so what i do let's say i wake up in the morning and there's 20 things that sold i'll go through all these things pick out the 20 things and i'll set them on this half of the ping pong table and if they need to overflow then they can um i'll just kind of line them up so then i have quick access to everything um i made this bubble wrap roll <laughs> uh, i literally just got like a server rack and like drilled screws and i don't know what i did but anyway it works pretty good i'm sure you could buy something like this somewhere but, or just make your own, just do what I did. It works really well. So you can have the bubble wrap down here and it's really easy to just get an item, just quickly wrap it all the way up if you need to. So that's great. Um, some of the supplies I'm using, 
when I'm shipping or scissors. I don't know why there's four of them. Um, I like to have a normal um, thing of tape, just so like if I'm wrapping something with bubble wrap, I don't have to use this, which I'm sure everyone has seen, but just one of these tape guns you go on the box and it just makes it really easy to cut off and fast to wrap around it. And a tape measure for measuring the size of the box. And speaking of boxes, um, I don't buy boxes, which is really strange for a store of this size to not buy any boxes, but I just don't. Um, I've been able to, thanks to um, family members and support and people finding them for me and me going out myself just to dumpsters or uh, grocery stores and just filling up a grocery cart full of boxes coming home and just lining them all up. Um, I would like to change this one day. It can be a little tricky to find exactly, like let's say if I sell an Xbox, it can be a little hard to find like the exact kind of box that I need, but I normally am able to find it. Um, that's definitely one way I could definitely improve. Um, if you guys have any ideas of how to like organize boxes, I mean, obviously by size, which I used to do, but it's hard to keep up for sure. Um, but it, it probably would be worth my time because it would save me a lot of time as I'm shipping. The only boxes I do buy right now are these six by eight by fours, just because I need those that kind of size a lot. And I could not keep up with just finding them in the trash or wherever else. Um, these shelves um, up top, these are the large priority mailboxes. Got some spare tape, and same with here, some clear tape. Um, the eBay tape you can get, and if you didn't know, if you have a store on eBay, you can get it a very good percentage off. So you can get like 12 rolls for like five bucks. Um, that's the only reason that I that I have that. Um, some big poly mailers. Um, this is all these bins are basically just like miscellaneous packaging material which i try not to buy as well um, one thing i've kind of found over the years maybe like why do you have a bunch of grocery bags in here um, they work really well as just filler if you just get a bunch of grocery bags and just ball them up and put them in the bottom of things and around things it works really well to protect things especially things that aren't super duper heavy so that's kind of a random thing over the years that i've began to do down here is at the bottom shelf is all my priority mail flat rate boxes so basically all of them that they make are down there. I don't use those very much anymore now that ground advantage is a thing. Um, it's kind of just killed these boxes for me. I do use them like probably every few days or so, but I used to use them a lot more when it was just priority and um, when priority was the only way you could ship something over a pound using USPS. So those have not gotten as much use as they used to. And speaking of not getting much use, these are the regional boxes. I hardly ever, ever use these unless I have something very small that weighs an insane amount, which is not very often when you're selling video games. So, yeah, I have them just in case. Um, they're under there. And, yeah, I have a garbage can here just for garbage. Um, I guess we'll move right over to my shipping little PC here. Uh, it's nothing fancy in terms of the computer, so they just... A Think Center with an i5, like 6th gen. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you're just shipping. So um, I just got a little small form factor PC just so it doesn't take up much room. A lot of people use a laptop, but as you can see, I like my good keyboards. So here's a Model M, IBM Model M, which is a fantastic keyboard. And I also like having a real mouse as well, which obviously you can plug into a laptop, but it's just not the same. Um, here's my Rolo printer, which this thing has been fantastic. Um, I love it. I've printed thousands and thousands and thousands of labels and have no issues at all. And it saved me a lot of money over the years. I definitely recommend it. This is the wired version because I don't, Bluetooth printers are just annoying. So I just recommend plugging it right in so you don't have any issues. A lot of people recommend those Dymo whatever printers. I forget exactly what they're called, but those don't, um, those you need a specific label to use and they cost more. So this is, Definitely better over those. I don't know why so many people recommend those. Um, these you can use whatever, I think it's four by six labels that you that you want really. So um, I have an AccuTech scale, which everybody has, just cheap, it works. Mine is actually, we can begun to separate a little bit. Uh, low battery warning. It's hard to separate a little bit, but it does still work. So I'm still using it. Um, these are just some envelopes here that are just easier to grab. So. Um, when I'm organizing over here, I'll put the games like on the corner right here. So if I sell a game, let's pretend this pair of scissors is a game. Just grab the game, weigh it, 
I already know the dimensions, you know, pop it in the envelope and, um, well, actually I would pop it in the envelope first and then weigh it and everything else. But, and then, um, type it in, print the label. And then I always have a bin right here that I can just throw it in once they're done. So I can fill up the bin and I can also fill up the area underneath my um, computer chair. I also have a garbage can here for all the, the labels from the Rolo, but, um, yeah, so that's like part of the setup, but I also wanted to show um, some unlisted inventory and how how I do that as well. So let's do that now. Okay, so we're over here now, as you can see. Um, I hope this kind of makes sense. Like here's all this stuff, and then it wraps around, and then this, here's this stuff. So all of these, um, this is obviously would only apply if you do sell video games. This is all like controllers and stuff that I intend on putting with consoles at some point for like bundles and stuff. So like up top, we got PS4, PS3. Um, these two bins are just random accessories that sometimes I'll just go through and sell stuff or some of the stuff I do put with consoles and stuff like that. Um, like if you just need some weird little thing, it's normally in those. Um, Xbox original controllers, Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Um, this bin right here is full right now, so I need to do something with that. It's basically just third-party controllers. I basically just throw them all in there, and then once it fills up, I just do a big untested lot. I just don't deal with the third-party controllers unless it's something, like, cool. Um, PlayStation 2 controllers, a huge basket there. PlayStation 1. Um, eventually, like, once they do get full like this, I like to try to, like, you know, thin it out a bit and just sell some of the controllers as they are. Um... This is Sega, so Dreamcast, um, Genesis, and there's probably no Saturn in there just because I don't have any. Uh, these are all GameCube controllers, OEM, um, N64, um, NES, and Super Nintendo. So all these bins are pretty much full, so I probably do need to go through these soon. Wii remotes, Wii nunchucks, and then down there's more third party. Um, and then we move into this closet here. So this closet was kind of hard to figure out exactly what I wanted to do with it. But as you can see, I utilize the space pretty well, but we'll get to that in a minute. So what this closet is primarily, and these cables here, are cables to put with system. So basically, um, when I go in that back room, which I'll show you in a minute, and I grab, let's say, an Xbox 360, I can come here, boom, grab the controller, um, grab a power supply, and grab some video cables and test it out and make sure that it's good. So that's basically what all this, these cables are. As well so more xbox 360 and these are all labeled and the labels are correct and what they are so yeah i just kind of have it all laid out to where i can find stuff again overflow <laughs> there's these drawers are full um yeah I mean, there's nothing really else to say about it i basically just have the, the cables organized where i can find them and then on this wall is what i like to call um, bundler games so if you don't know um, what these are is basically they're shit games, or they just don't have value, really. So, like, if you're selling an Xbox, if I'm selling an original Xbox, you know, I'll throw a copy of Counter-Strike with it just to kind of make it a little more enticing and to be able to take a picture of it working with a game just so people know that it reads discs and everything and you don't have to explain, like, it doesn't actually come with the game, so it's nice to just include it with it. So, yeah, I mean, there's just a bunch of common games that eventually will be put with consoles, Sometimes I'll do, like, lots. Like, a lot of times, like, the Call of Duty games will end up in here. And I'll end up doing just, like, a bundle of a bunch of them. Um, or, and a few of these are empty cases. Like, you'll see this Black Ops 2. Like, oh, that's, like, an $18 game. But it's it's empty, so. But um, on the other side of this wall continues that trend. So here's some 2600 games. Um, some Xbox. Just a kind of miscellaneous. I try to keep it a little bit organized. But as you can see, it's kind of fallen out of that phase more atari and television coleco vision 5200 just everything a bunch of nes um, super nintendo genesis um and then even this shelf here is i just kind of added to the setup and it's kind of growing slowly so yeah so that's uh, that's basically everything that i would use to like make a system bundle that's kind of what this area is so, like Grab the controller, grab the power, grab the video, and grab some games to put with it and make a nice lot. So, yeah, so let's go where the systems are. 
Okay, so this is the back room, I call it. Um, it's very, there's a lot of stuff in here that isn't part of the business, but <laughs> this is part of the business. So um, basically there's these two huge black shelves here and basically everything on the ground, literally everything on the ground right here is stuff that I intend on selling that's just not been listed yet. So basically when I come down here in the morning, um, it, like I can go grab the Sega Genesis, test it out and you know, see what it does. If it's broke, then fix it or sell it for parts. And yeah, so I basically, when I buy stuff, I just kind of add it to here. There's a bunch of games. You know, you guys can see. I mean, there's a bunch, a bunch of stuff. So, and then this kind of wraps around to these shelves and these drawers over here. It's basically just all unlisted things, which you definitely want to have as a reseller. You don't want to be like, oh, I don't have anything to list, you know? That's just, that's really not a place you want to be. Um, that's just a sign that you need to get better at sourcing, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically all there is to how I would run my business. I do have a storage unit as well that's pretty much full of video game stuff, but I'm not going to show that in this video. If you guys want to see that, uh, maybe we'll do a video there and kind of show some of the random crap that's in there. But yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Like this whole bin here is full of box Super Nintendo games and N64 games. So just a lot of stuff I have to get to. Um, even over here, this is going to be listed. This whole tub is like 500 Nintendo powers that I just haven't gotten to yet. But um, anyway, this is the listed stuff. You definitely want to have a lot of this if you're trying to grow your business. And yeah, so you can do consistent listings every day. Um, so yeah, that's basically the setup. Um, I've pretty, I'm pretty happy with it where it is right now. Um, I mean, obviously, there's definitely room to improve, especially over here. I would like to get these. I would definitely like to do something here again. If you have an idea for that, let me know, because that would be really cool um, to get the boxes to a state where they're a lot easier to use. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed, um, stay tuned for more videos of some kind. You never know what's going to be, I guess. But, <laughs> yeah, anyway, thanks so much for watching. You have a fantastic rest of your day, and keep grinding, keep selling keep collecting. All right, bye.